Hello, hello, hello. I am so happy to be here today. Does that sound too forced? Um, no, I'm really glad to be back to the stream. And uh, we are at a very, very close um, marker, is that right? Point. It's the end of the game, I think. So let's, uh, let's see. I was worried that I'm not gonna make enough money in the next two days for Jill to pay her rent. And that's a, that's a very real concern. So I'm just gonna have to deal with her getting distracted and be on my A game. Oh, they got mentioned in, uh, they got mentioned in the, this, this not Reddit. Uh, is it any good? I need a place to unwind after work, work. Normies are taking over, huh? Her, everyone is a neat, just like me. Anyway, place is cool, but the bartender can be a bit of a dick. How so? Never been there, so, so I wouldn't know. Is she cute? I'm full of myself. You are. Uh, I could take it if she's cute. She's cute, but I think she's a bit full of herself. The bro seems a bit more of a... Oh, sorry. The guy seems a bit more of a bro. I see you already had a conversation with her. Did she reject your advances? Nah, I just heard from a, the distance. So, is that a no? Kind of. I mean, if you're going there, just to chat. I just want a place to chill for a bit and meet new people. Like Twitch. Can I smoke there? Is there any bar from the BTC where you can smoke? Nope. Bummer. Well, I think I'm gonna going next week. Sounds good enough for me. Uh, and the alter, oh, sorry, the augmented eye. Y2K, the final remaster leads the video game charts. So, I I believe the reason why Y2K gets a, no, a whole big push is because the the publisher of this game, um, I'm gonna butcher the name, but it's like Easebird Games or whatever, they also published Y2K. So that was the other thing. Anyway, the newest remaster, 2016's, uh, so that's when it came out. Wait, no. Did it come out in 2016? I have no idea. The newest remaster, uh, 2016's Y2K, a postmodern RPG, opens the charts this week with 3.5 million copies shipped on its launch day. Sh shipped. Other titles this week include new releases such as Hatsune Miko. Project R uh, remaster and Sting's face remaster. So that's you couldn't tell. It's uh, Project Diva, um, Atsune Miku's Project Diva, and uh, Steins Gate, most likely, or anything from the Steins Gate series. Probably like what's it called, Chaos Child? Yeah. Uh, full chart including lifetime sales. Y2K the final remaster 3.5 million new. Atsune Miku project remaster 1.5 million new. Sting Space remastered 950 new. Water Pro Wrestling G 500k. Bang it Round Paul. Is that supposed to be a dig at Ron Paul? This is the third final this year. I wonder what they mean. Woman marries anime pillow. Nobody is actually surprised. <laughs> is this an Onion article? I remember a time when wacky stuff like this made a lot of headlines, but even though I'm reporting on it, I can't think, I can't help but think how mundane it's become. I mean, we live in a world where you can just plug into the internet and live there for as long as your wallet can afford related fees. Lots of people get married in these virtual spaces. Thanks to new technologies, the traditional view on human relationships have changed so much that it, someone marrying a literal object feels Kind of tame now. If the pillow had some form of intelligence, it might be somewhat different. But it's just a plain generic anime hug pillow. Get with the times, grandma. So what they really mean is we need to start marrying those real skin 3D dolls. You know what I mean? Wanna marry me? Can't marry your own son. Explain that to uh, some of the, the doujin artists. And um, more importantly, uh, Kotaku reported on this like a while ago. It was about this guy who had like this whole fancy real wedding and everything that made the news with his uh, Love Plus. Is that the name of the game? Love Plus character. Uh, 
it's a 3DS dating sim for I, I think it was only released in Japan. Anyway, I I remember that stuff. I was like, Japan has a really has the whole market locked on uh, dating characters. Um, and I don't know, robot technology, sex doll technology is advancing to that point, so. Anyway, I have a girlfriend. I'm just making a clarification here. I I have no intentions of, of finding a perfect mate. Wait, I didn't mean it like... You know... <laughs> First Space Colony plans to develop its own army. Even though space was imagined as the promised land, a place where humanity would start over, it looks like we're about to repeat our mistakes from the past. The first space colony, Shin Outer Paradise, because of course, is currently in talks to develop its own privately owned army, followed alleged, following alleged threats from a notorious terrorist group. Is this... Gundam? Is this... Gundam's plot stolen by Call of Duty? I mean, come on. You, you guys played it, right? Caught a... What was it? Blops... 3? Blops 3? Infinite Warfare? One of those two. Probably Infinite Warfare. That was the one where Mars... Mars, uh... Terrorism? I don't know. We're discussing it right now, but the law is most likely approved. We'll have an army, and we'll defend our motherland from any terrorist threat. Sounds legit. Alice Rabbit chimed in during a private stream. This terrorist group does not exist. Don't let the Outer Paradise government fool you. The only reason for this law is so they can have more control of the population. And Alice Rabbit is in space too? Amazing. So, we got all that going on. Uh, did uh, Kira Miki say anything? said that already, so we good. Let's just head to work. Wednesday, December 28th. Evening. Ah, chill. I'm out to get firecrackers. Firecrackers? It's New Year's, right? We need some. Wouldn't firecrackers scare off the do- Yeah. Good idea. Go ahead. He was going to say dogs. I'll be back in a bit. Even for a cat lover, you sure get excited about firecrackers a whole lot more when dogs are involved. I know how hypocritical it sounds, and I don't care. Ah, Jamie's here. Greetings. Anyway, let's start. I just... How do I unlock the rest of the songs? Are they all bought? Maybe. Maybe if I 100% this game, I would know. But... It's not happening. Sorry. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Ah, uh, the guy that wouldn't come back twice. Yeah, yeah. Shut up. By any chance, did something fly over here two weeks ago? On Friday? Yes. There were lots of weird explosion noises throughout the night. But as far as I understand, those were made by a flying drone or something like that. So it flew by here. I take it you know what made the noise? Let's just keep it at whatever drone story you heard. Right. The noise got annoying after a while, I must say. So it remained in the vicinity? I don't know what counts as in the vicinity, but yeah. 
distant explosions all night. Interesting. So it didn't get far away. Hmm. Um. Now, get me a Mars Blast. Here you go. Well, you didn't mess up. Sorry if I may interject. You looking for a fight? Oh, certainly not. You really think he'd stand a chance? You're like half his size. I can fight dirty. He kills people for a living. I can fight dirty. Jill, please, make me sound like a savage. It would be like me saying that you get people drunk for a living. Too much British, not enough Australian. It's not wrong. There are better ways of saying stuff like that. Am I getting any closer? <laughs> You're right. Sorry. And like I said, I'm not looking for a fight. I just noticed you seemed like strong drinks. What about it? Well, to be honest, rare sight in this bar. I'd even come to believe I'm the only one here who enjoys them, aside from the owner. And I suggest you try a suplex. Uh, wow. Why? And I suggest you try a suplex. Next time, it might be to your liking. Hmm. Okay. Let's try this suplex thing. Right. Here. Hmm, good stuff. Like a less burning but punchier pile driver. Say, your face looks somehow familiar, Mr. Call me Jamie. You are? I'm Ingram. Anyway, I think I saw your face somewhere. Maybe when I needed to look for a specific file at. Hmm. Did you perhaps go through our nano machine expunge? I did, actually. Figured as much. Only a handful of people do that. And almost all of them are people with nano machine rejection that feel oddly suicidal. So, why go through the whole thing? Rejection. Need to hide something? Second one? It's easier to remember undetected when they- Oh, sorry. It's easier to remain undetected when they have no means to track you or your activity. I see. How does the expunge work? You lie in a pressure chamber and they give you a special IV solution. It causes nanomachine rejection while giving you the antibodies needed to pre prevent them from getting back in. Five hours? You're trapped in bed while a horrible, uh, while a horrible pressure builds up in your body. See, why do I dip into this like southern not uh, builds up in your body and nano machines are forced out? They're like little needles all over your body. You feel them in your eyes, in your gums, in your toes, and everywhere. And after all that. They need to implant you with a, net, a mechanism that constantly releases the same antibodies. Ouch. What are you having, Jamie? This is a gut punch. Yeah, should have figured. Hey, give me one of those. Sure.
Here. Yeah. I love these. It looks different from yours, though. <clears throat> I add a couple of extras in his, actually. So where's the antibody unit they stuck you with, Jamie? Inside. Like all other maintenance systems. Be troublesome at times. But the perks of not having nanomachines in the body outweighs the, co the cons. And the rest of the enhancements? Were you reconstructed, or have you been adding them over time? Over time, either by getting a much needed enhancement or through fixing injuries. I see. Well, it was a pleasure, Jamie, but I gotta leave. Nice meeting you, Ingram. Please come again. Don't count on it. You said that twice. Shut up. You seem like a nice guy. Right. I won't call him a bastard, but he's not the nicest in the bunch. Maybe you caught him on a bad day? Yeah, I think you're just that good at bringing out the nicer side of people. Oddly enough. That guy tires the hell out of me. <laughs> Can't do forced laughs when you're looking at it. Someone's in a good mood. Give me a bad touch, will you? That way you'll be in a good mood, too. You have such a petty sense of humor. You'll see us charged. So, what put you in a good mood? Oh yeah, that. Today, my sister was supposed to be in court for all the custody proceedings. Of course, not only does she show up later than her husband and drunk at that, but also dressed like she got fucked in the back of a parking lot. And to top it off, she forgot to even bring her kids! Luckily, my parents brought them to court. The judge assigned the kids to my parents for the time being. So she really messed it up, huh? <sighs> when they came back to the house and Diana started throwing a temper tantrum, she said it was lucky her husband didn't get the kids because the angst would make her jump onto the highway. So Eva comes and says, Make sure it kills you because we aren't dealing with, a with you as a cripple. I shouldn't reinforce that behavior, but shh. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was the timing, but I've been laughing for an hour now. You hold quite the animosity for Diana, don't you? She and I used to be the closest friends when I was seven or eight. We played all the time. We even slept on the same bed for a while. Then she turned into a teen. We stopped playing. She had other things she wanted to do. I could forgive all of that. I mean, the age difference and all. But there's something in particular I still can't forgive. It was the day she invited her friends to the house and I went to ask her something. As I was leaving, one of her friends asked if I was her sister. And she said she had no little sisters. Ouch. I think that was the moment that finally broke the pedestal I hel held her on. I admired her as much as a kid could admire someone, you know? Little by little, that admiration wore off until we finally re reached that breaking point. I felt betrayed. And you haven't been able to forgive her after 40 years? Hey. Not that I still hold a grudge against her, Rather, the Diana who said all those things so many years ago is the same Diana that I know today. How so? She hasn't matured one bit. She's still as selfish, childish, and immature as she was back then. When you see her, you don't see an adult. 
you see an overgrown, horny teen. And so aside from destroying my any admiration I held for her, she's made sure not to fix that impression. Huh. But enough about me. How are you? Everything's fine. Aside from this note. A note? Remember how I told you I lashed out at my dead girlfriend, uh, dead's, dead ex's sister? Yeah? I got this note from her. Let's see. Wow. She must really feel bad about the whole thing. As do I. So what's the problem then? The same fear that drove me away from her in the first place. Right. Keep a brantini, will you? There's a little story I want to tell you. Right. Here. This is the thing. Let's start. Boo! Oh, hell no. This is the story of a girl who drew, drew disillusions with one of her sisters. Soon, it became animosity, and not long after that, she distanced herself completely from said sister. With time, the girl would become attached to her eldest sister, looking up to her achievements. All I can look at right now are those boobs. Not now. Said sister would even marry the girl's best friend not soon after. And after the girl went into college, said sister would quit her job. The sister was worried sick about leaving her baby kid alone, prompting her to quit her high-ranking job. What if I hire your high-ranking lips? So is Anna embodying all of Jill's, like, sexual tension? Or just general tension? Shut up. The girl, even as an adult, uh, even as an adult, felt betrayed. Her role model sister went against everything she held, in, held her in high esteem for. She was no longer a child, and yet she felt like a part of her had crumbled. Hey Joe, I can lift your sweater. Do you want to see? I bet you want to see. Alright, enough. Enough? Shit. Peace out. Er, uh, I mean, I know the girl is you and the sister is your older sister. Please get to the point. Right. The point is, if you don't face her, she will be heavily disappointed. She's trying to make amends with you. That must take courage. Lots of it. Yeah, you're right. My mouth's dry. Can I get a beer? Right. Here. Thanks. So, tell me. Do you and this Gabby girl get along? Oh yeah. I never had brothers and sisters, but once Lenore introduced me to her as her sister-in-law. She got so excited about having a new sister that she clung to me a lot. I helped her in her studies, read books with her, played with her a lot. She was... she was pretty much my sister too. I have to leave, but I'll tell you this. As both a big and little sister, if you don't grant that girl the chance of talking to you, I'll never forgive you. Oh, there's a small New Year's party this Saturday if you're interested. Oh, sure. I'll be there. Oh, I'll be here. Remember, I won't forgive you. Yeah, yeah. I'll go take my break. All right. What? You were here? You were quite absorbed in the conversation just now. Jamie even said goodbye to you. Didn't you hear? Yeah. Anyways... Call me if anything comes up. I'm not messing around today. So, my term paper is from my advanced forensic psychology class, and it's about the, the toy box killer. Uh, David Ray Parker, that's his name.
probably before most people's time. Anyone, anyone that would be watching the stream. Anyway, but anyway, don't listen. Don't listen to his audio tape. That shit will fuck you up. I guarantee it. Okay. And now that I said don't do it, you're gonna do it. But like, just read the transcript instead. It's still chilling. Just okay. He's not as popular as other serial killers, but he's you know somebody. Now my only problem is I don't have 12 primary sources, so go figure. <sighs> it's less chilly today. Jill, it's looking for you. Oh shit. That's not the kill. How did I do Norma's fa uh, voice? Did I do her? I don't know. We're going. Hey. Ah, Norma. Phew. You're back. Oh, fuck you. You do know I'm not giving you any drinks, right? Crap, I said it out loud. Yeah, um, actually... I wanted to thank you. Phew, thought it was for her. Thank me? Well, for starters, by not complying and giving me alcohol. Uh... Everything else would have fallen apart if I had some. Aw, oh, so responsible, Joe. I... kind of faced my mom and told her all about the pressure she was putting on me. And said I wanted to figure out what I wanted to do. And? Well, she didn't speak to me for two days. After that, she told me that it'd be a waste to spend money in a university just for me to not give it my all. So she told me to still go to the college course, that I was free to... explore. Glad to hear that. And, well, I wanted to thank you for that. Me? If I just rushed, rushed headfirst into my original plan, things would have gotten ugly. And you were right. I would be hurting her for the sake of hurting. So, thank you. Don't worry about it. I'll leave before it's too late outside. Be careful. Aw, oh, so sweet. Shut up. <clears throat> hey, Jill. Mind helping me here? Sure. Make a bleeding chain, please. On it. Do they operate two sides of the same bar, or like, what's the deal here? Thanks. Hey Joe, do you hate me? Hate is a harsh word. It's not against you directly, but rather the fact that only I can see you. Like I told you, if they wanted, they could see me. And why can't I? You're the main character? I don't know. What are you? A cute girl. Right. You okay, Jill? Making a lot of faces there. Hmm? Yeah, just remembering stuff. Could you give me a hand here and serve a beer, please? Sure. Thanks. So it's not that I'm getting better at the game or anything, it's just uh, when I looked up not a walkthrough, mm -hmm. um, I'm not following any walkthroughs because I'm just playing the game. But I did see a hel helpful thing where it shows keyboard shortcuts for adding ingredients to the drink. So I was like, yeah, I'll take that. Would you lighten up if I showed you I can interact with the environment? Maybe it'll spook me, but let's try. There! What did she do? Is she out of frame? Can't see anything. You sure? Yep. 
weird. So yeah, I should change the frame. I'm not going to do her voice in drag. It's too difficult. I'm just going to do this moe blob of a... Nobody expects the Doroth Inquisition! Doroth Inquisition! Doroth Inquisition! Doroth Inquisition! Inqu Ouch! I bit my tongue! I can't believe I'm using the spare tongue so early in the night. <clears throat> Honey! Ah. Uh, hey, Dorothy. I'm making a quick stop for a drink. Can I get a fluffy dream? Sure. Thanks! Oh yeah, before you leave. What? Are you guys throwing a New Year's party too? Yep. Sure, I'll be here then. That was fast. Well, I've got things to do, so... You do? Who does what? Sorry, I sneezed. Weird sneezes. Anyway, I'm out for now. Oh yeah, Joe? Take care of Becky, please. Who the hell is Becky? Who's Becky? Who's what? You said... I said nothing. Okay, fuck that noise. Fireworks are sold out everywhere. I'll need to get them through more... Shady means. Wow, that's not a subtle. She's gonna buy them from the internet. She'll find them and put us all at risk of burning. I'll make sure there's an extra extinguisher at hand. Please. Well, I guess that's it for today. You sure you're fine? I am. Don't worry. Hey, Jill. Mind if I ask a silly question? You've seen my clients. You can assume I don't mind silly questions. Silly answers can, it get, uh, can get on my nerves, though. Sorry. What did you want to ask? Do you know why they call them cat boomers? I mean, I guess their second set of ears look like a cat's, but the word boomer seems so out of place. Not so much when you consider it's not them, but their parents who were called such. Oh? Let's go a bit back first. You do know why cat boomers look like that, right? Because they went through some anti nanomachine rejection treatment while they were still a fetus, right? It's called the Yamazaki Romanova treatment. Or was it the Rom Romaneko Yamada treatment? Oh, Ro Roman Romanenko Yamada treatment. The Roma, let's call it the catification procedure. It was not only the first successful genetic treatment on a fetus, but also the first way to fight nanomachine rejection. Moreover, that research had a bit of a rocky story. Funding got cut in the middle of it at a critical point that could make or break the whole thing. Not to mention Zaibatsu Corps' record of not addressing nanomachine rejection at all. The rest of the research was funded by Maki Stengovich. Was it Stengovich? Let's call him Stengovich for now. He's a businessman whose unborn daughter got diagnosed with early nanomachine rejection. Stengovich funded the research, and in a desperate move, his wife offered herself and her daughter as test subjects. Of course, the experiment was a success. The girl, Sylvia Stangovich, didn't die. She became the living testament of a scientific breakthrough. But then, the story of how things played out for Sylvia got sensationalized in the media and created a weird fad. Parents made their unborn children go through the catification procedure, even if they had no ailments at all. All because one particular girl whose life got saved through that treatment became a media darling for a bit. A whole generation of kids with those cat-like uh, protrusions got born. And their parents are... Uh, and their parents got called cat boomers. A generation of parents obsessed with those cat-like features. The fad quickly passed, but the term remained in use. Eventually, cat boomer just started being used for people with a protrusion instead of their parents. You keep calling them protrusions. Why is that? Because that's what they are. Huh? Eh? You didn't think those things on their heads were ears, right? Sure, they could be moved because they're somehow connected to the facial and ear muscles. Thus, they can move like a cat's and react to their mood. But in the end, they're just appendages with no real function. 
Huh. Still surprised me a bit, though, that the biggest mutation they get after the treatment is that. Those ears are a small miracle on their own. People have been born with no eyes for less intrusive procedures. You really thought they were functional ears, huh? Let's say I learned quite a bit today. Thank you. Don't worry. I feel like I should apologize for talking so much instead. And keep in mind, I'm fucking up the terms. I don't want you saying someone got protrusions because of a catification procedure. I'll keep it in mind. Wait! What? Yeah, the guy's name was Stankovich. Eh? I just remembered Sylvia Stankovich was around my age, and when I was a teen, there were some TV specials featuring her. And I just remembered that I had the biggest crush on her. Now that I think about it, that crush had me very confused back then. And if you need to shout, now, uh, to shout just now? Sorry. In any case, I'm out for the day. Alright, careful out there. All booze and no firecrackers makes Dana a dull girl. So if we were to classify Jill in this day and age, maybe. Oh, flip. Is she going to get evicted because I don't have enough money? <sighs> what am I going to do? What do I do? What do I do? I'm hosed. I'm probably gonna have to cut and go back a while, so I don't know what to do. Uh, you've been talking a lot with that Alma girl. Jealous. Surviving English today. Any tips for a new friend in this wonderful land? Oh boy, self-deprecating thread. Don't trust in white knights and don't go out after 5 p.m. unless you want to get mugged or murdered. Bring a portable chair everywhere. You'll have to line up for flour, lol. Get used to eat uh, Get used to eat what you find. Shortages are getting out of hand. I've been eating rice with butter for months now, but I guess it could be worse. Don't jinx it, please. I have enough as it is. So coming here was a mistake? Why would you come here anyway? Visiting family, but now I want to take them out. Do it while you can. Yeah, airlines are leaving the city. Lol, soon we won't even be able to escape. Crying face. Can I even get some weed in this crap hole somewhere? Yeah, I just PM'd you a good dealer. That's what I'm saying. Anyway... BTC closing 40% of its bars in Glitch City. The British Trademark Council... That's what it is? Sure. The British Trademark, Trademark Council is facing some economic troubles in Glitch City, and it looks like they're on their way out. Blaming rising inflation rates and a weak currency, the BTC has given the order to disband almost half of its recreational business in the city. We can't keep doing business like this. Glitch City has a negative impact in our earnings, and we can't continue in the red, the PR representative told the Augments and I. Prime Minister Quincy, on the other hand, thinks the BTC is just too greedy. They're, they make a lot of money already, and now they're crying because they can't have more? Give me a break. Wearing socks with sandals in public is now a crime, as it has always been. Guilty. I like to say we have the freedom to wear whatever we like in the streets of Glitch City so long as we adhere to decency rules. However, that's about to change. Glitch City's Department of Public Decency has declared that wearing socks and sandals together is a punishable crime. If convicted, the, the guilty face three days in jail as punishment for using that abominable combo. But what do you think? Should we wear whatever we want, or should the fashion police of high society decide for you? Whatever the case, I think I'll simply stick to the right side of the battle. Goodbye, socks and sandals. Birth rates decrease as the youth prefers Lilim Company. Oh my god, robots are finally the true give-up machines. Being only with Lilum can be tough. Wait, wait, wait. What did she say on the... Oh, yeah. This... Late to the party are... I and God's be praised for a silly law I'm all in for. Interesting. Okay. At the beginning of the century, the idea that people would rather be with robots instead of other humans was treated as a joke. But the reality is that the convenience of these kinds of relationships have become immensely popular among Glitch City's youth. To the point where birth rates are beginning to de decrease at an alarming rate. Annie May, a 17-year-old student, agrees with the general sentiment. Just so much better than dealing with other people, you know? You can just make your own, uh, just make your own perfect partner. Oh, and the sex is amazing. 
Don't even get me started. It's expected that new regulation will soon will soon to be announced to address the situation. Right then. Yermiki says nothing. Okay. I'm very worried about things. Money-wise. So, if given the chance, I should probably sell something really expensive. Or my nuts, and this number is like three times more than what I needed. To. No, right? Yes? I could see. All right, here's something I gotta admit. I'm very bad at looking at numbers. Not just like calculations. Like, I'm not just bad at math. Looking at numbers confuses me. A lot. And yet I'm still learning how to code. How about that? Anyway. Hey. Okay, so we've got almost everything. We're still missing a couple of things for Saturday. And so I designate you, Jillian Applegate, as official guy who goes to buy the rest of the stuff. Applegate? I have no idea who that is. Why me? I could send Jill, but I wouldn't dare send a lady by herself. And I could go with her, but I believe the bar should have at least two people in the vicinity at all times. You're not going to say anything, Jill? If it means not being delivery girl, I'm happy to fake helplessness. <sighs> Fine, give me that list. I'll be back. Sometime. Something tells me you're planning something, boss. What gives you that impression? Call it... a gut feeling. Did you know Jill has a crush? He... what? A client of his. A girl that owns a bazaar. He's been coming on to him for ages, and he's only just started opening up. But he's taken steps backward, and I'm not going to let him. He's opening up, for fuck's sake. And so the errands will take him to the bazaar, I take it. That's right. Huh. All right, then. To the office I go. As for me... Time to mix drinks and change lives. Joe with a crush, huh? This place. Great. Oh, if it isn't... Hey, Jill! Sorry, but is there anywhere I can hide? There's an unpleasant guy on my trail. Boss! Stalked woman incoming! The door's open! Go ahead, the door's to the left. Thanks! Hello there. Oh, hi there. The other one. That's the bathroom. Wait, what's the dog doing in the bathroom? Now, <clears throat> oh. How? <clears throat> where did she? Oh, hellhole. Perfect. Hey, kid. I'll have the usual. Right. Huh, you remembered me after two weeks. Big freaking beer. Four, two, one, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh. Shit. Here. It seems right. The paper's been a mess lately. You'd think with all that's happening, they'd stay and do more reports. But they're all asking for vacations, and I can't afford to be understaffed. So, I had to come up with some sort of reward for whoever produces the most reports. I see no difference in my feed, though. Mr. Donovan, I don't mean to sound rude, but... You do know the infamy of the augments die with the general public, right? A shitty page that will over-sensationalize anything and report useless things. Of course I know. Then why not try to rectify that image? To put it simply, 
I'm being clutched by the balls in the non-pleasant way. Zaibatsu Corps and company have an eye on every publication they haven't bought yet. Report on them once and they'll find something to find you with. Twice and you'll find your resources severely cut. Anything beyond that, and the best case scenario is that they'll buy the damn operation to keep it quiet. I know there are more newsworthy things than whatever it is the lackeys picked out that week. But if I overstep, my ass is on the line. Huh. Glad to see this hellhole is still in one piece. The BTC has been going ape shit closing bars lately. Oh yeah. That. Yesterday, they closed one that served as a key part of a, tr a drug trafficking ring. And last week, they closed three small bars that served as, an, as illegal chicken restaurants. Huh. Not to mention, there are like a hundred people who have BTC certificates but never use them. Instead, they keep those credentials around to stop police from raiding their homes or warehouses. I don't know about you. But it's obvious to me that some restructuring will begin at the BTC after this whole thing. Man, shit ran deeper than I thought. And no news outlet talks about it. Talks about that. Alright, kid. Let's try a moon blast now. Come again? Hey, even I have to break the routine from time to time. Sweet, girly, and happy. Here. Now, let's see what the ruckus is about. Um, so... What brought you here? Oh, right. Didn't you see a Lilum coming in here? Blue hair, big tits. She's the one from the Encore concert coming up. Not really. Does she jump to the roof then? Why were you looking for her? You want an interview? Not really, just hitting on her. Hey, I said hitting on her, not hitting her. Stop glaring. Why though? Are you that bored? Don't you have like a family or something? Have you seen that girl? Hot as tits. Also hot ass and tits. I'm suffering the weirdest combo of being hard as fucking curious as shit right now. I want to know just how detailed those King Class CH1A models are. Personally. And so you followed her. I've yet to meet a woman that can't re that can resist the charms of Donovan D. Dawson. You're in front of one, and I'm guessing you have quite the selective memory. Like I said, don't you have a family or something? A wife. That woman cheats on me as much as I cheat on her. In fact, I'm pretty convinced she gets off on the thought of me cheating on her. So that Lilim isn't here, huh? I'll have to find a busty enough replacement tonight or I'll explode. Hey, after you're done glaring, please serve me a pile driver. Right. Three. Here. All right. Well, seeing as she's not here, I have no reason to say. Maybe I'll find someone that looks a bit like her. The guy left. Oh, all right. Thanks for sheltering me. Oh, sorry. Thanks for sheltering me, Dana. Hope your sister likes the video. No, thank you! Seems you had a hearty talk. Your boss is such a fun person. Her sister's a fan of mine, so I recorded a small video for her and took a couple of photos. How nice of you. It's nothing really, and she did hide me, so it's the least I could do. But, well, we're here already. Mind giving me something sweet? Sure. Something sweet. 
most expensive. Why Donovan was following you? I don't, but I wasn't in the mood to deal with him. His questions were a bit over the line last time, too. Not the worst I've dealt with, but I just didn't want to humor him. I see. Seems like he was just trying to come on to you. You don't say... Well, not like he'd have a chance anyways. I'm not into older guys, and I'm already committed to a relationship. Figure... Wait, you are? It's not common knowledge, and the ones that hear it try to dismiss it as rumors, but... I've been in a relationship with my producer for a while now. Really? We're both single, and that kind of stuff is bound to happen when you spend so much time together. But it all started when he read an entry I made in my blog about wanting to experience love and the like. He offered to help with that after he read it, and I thought, sure, why not? I already knew him well enough. It wouldn't hurt to try. How nice. He's a stick in the mud where planning is due, but he's a sweetheart otherwise. I see. You know, I've met two fans of yours lately. Really? Both of them seemed so excited when they were talking about you. It was amazing. <laughs> I don't like the term fan too much. It strikes me as a bit... pretentious, in my opinion. I have many fans. Doesn't sit so well. I like many people who like my music better. Fan evokes an uglier and more pretentious image for me. Do you like what I do, Jill? Do you like my music? To be honest, I haven't had much exposure to your work, but the few things I've heard are really good. And not gonna lie, having talked to you, I feel like I would support you even if I didn't like it. So nice to hear. Hey, this will sound familiar, but do you have anything like tea? Let me see. Um, shoot. Right, something like tea. Uh. What does that mean? Something like tea. Uh, oh boy. Um... Sunshine Cloud might taste like tea. Okay, so, it's true I cheated just a little bit just now, but there are some things in the game that you cannot mix until you have bought it from JC Elton's. So, I don't have anything that tastes like tea. Instead, I'm going to serve her something kind of expensive, right? Here. Too vague of an order, huh? Sorry. Hey, you're a King Class CH1A, right? That I am. May I ask you something about your model? Sure! Are there any differences between you and a DFC-72? Hmm. We both serve the same purpose, but... 
The SC-72s have the port on their heads, which makes them more versatile. My line lacks that, or the resilience of the DT-01Ds, but we're a tad more polished elsewhere. More specifically, our voice emulators are more advanced and our movements are smoother. A trade-off of functionality and power for appearance, you could say. Ah, I see. So, anything new for this concert? Hmm. Well, it is an encore, so we're trying to make it the same for those that couldn't go to the first one. But we always try to spice it up, like maybe with a surprise song or something. There was this one time I sang a cover of the, a song by B-Link. Of course, in return, they sang Your Love is a Drug. Ah, so you know the B-Link girls? Really nice kids. You'd be surprised how different from their onstage personas they are. Really? Suzu, for example, can be really childish at times. She also laughs a lot. And loudly at that. Meanwhile, Aina is a party, uh, party girl through and through. If they're not on tour, she spends her time partying like crazy. Huh, hard to believe. I mean, their image is that of stoic girls with little expression. Almost like living Victorian dolls or something. Well, they wanted to pop out in the public. They once told me, if we want people to notice us, we have to break the cute Seattle concept. And so they took the opposite route by becoming cool beauties with melancholic songs. I wouldn't say they went the opposite way. The opposite of cutesy idols would be unkept, tone-deaf girls spewing vitriol and hate. True, I guess. Well, I've gotta go, but let's have a sparkle star first. Alright. Two... Oh. One, two, one... Here. Sparkling! Well, it's always a pleasure, Jill. Please come again. Will do! Oh, the handsome bartender! Nice to see you! Um, uh... Boss! Jill's back, I'll take my break! Alright. 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 Are we trading Chinese right now? Can you ask me later? Why? What are you doing? Which one are you trading? What? <sighs> Note to self, buy oil for that door. But you gotta watch out for boys. You first it's the hoodies, and then it's your shiny tricos. What did you trade it for, though? Okay. Okay. I don't know what you were gonna do. All right, then. Jill, you're in my spot, please. Oh, sorry. Also, you're cleaning one of Boss's chicken buckets. Did Boss ask you to do that? If I told you to, she did, would you believe me? Without a doubt. Let's go with that, then. Right. Greetings! Ah, Stella, what can I get you? I'll go with the bleeding chain today.
Here you go. Thank you. What brought you here today? Waiting for Say? I came by myself, actually. I was in the area and stopped to say hi. Oh. It's pretty interesting, though. When I first saw you, I doubted you'd ever come here again. Well, this place is... Comfortable, I must admit. It's so quiet and secluded. It's also clean. Really clean. Jill is the one you can owe that to. The guy takes pride in how clean he keeps things around here. If you ever need cleaning staff, he's a nice pick. Really? Hmm. <laughs> he's a bit out of it today, though. I see. Hey, Jill, have you ever heard of the new gold rush in the city? Gold rush? Everyone is paying small fortunes to get their hands on pieces of white night suits. I think I heard or read something about that. But I'm having doubts, so probably not. In any case, how was it a gold rush? Well, the tech behind the suits was always safely guarded, but after the events at the bank... Sorry. After the events at the bank, the suits were remotely shut down, bricking many of them in the process. Many units dropped their armors right there and fled when the lynchings went on. Any white knights still stuck in their suit had to take the armor off manually to run away. It all happened in the middle of the lynchings, so they'd be sitting ducks if they didn't. Some weren't that lucky. They got beaten up while they weren't able to move. So, between the suits becoming glorified paperweights and many white knights going on the run, there ended up being a lot of junk lying around. But the whole scientific community is rejoicing. They're on a race to reverse engineer the suits and take as much technology as possible from them. And of course, every single piece of, uh, even single pieces of the armor fetch a high price these days. Could anyone see any profit from that research to justify those expenses? It's new tech. A whole new field ripe with patents just open for many. So I'd say yes. Huh. I mean, the BTC is literally a conglomerate built upon patents and trademarks, I can see how. There is one weird case, though. Hmm? There's this guy named Jack. He's the captain of a very unique Blitzkrieg Corps unit. Unique. The big guy had a... Oh, sorry. The guy had a really small unit. Five people, including himself. The aesthetics of his unit's armor was heavily modded to the point that they looked like a squad of henshin heroes. And what? Ahem. <laughs> they looked really gaudy. So she's... She's into, like, the whole, uh, Sentai thing, probably. But it turned out that the guy actually broke through the software and disabled the remote switch. He has one of the few, if not the only, suits of armor with the OS intact. To say they're among the most wanted people would be an understatement. Did that say understandment? We can check. How do we, uh... Oh, sorry. You can activate that at any given time, but I don't know how to shut that off. Uh, oh, scrolling. It does say understandment. Uh oh. Suke Bon, get on that. You know a lot about this. It's interesting, the amount of things you hear when dealing with drunk people of all kinds in the same place. Also helps to put on a front that makes people lower their guard. That should sound familiar to you. True. Wait. Here's a freebie, a fun fact. The failsafe was originally going to involve the armor blowing up and leaving no trace. But regulations and laws didn't allow that kind of technology near civilians. I guess even Zabatsu Corps has its limits, huh? People love to demonize Zabatsu Corps because, let's face it, they're far from innocent. But they're not evil overlords. They're just... greedy. They're just a big corporation. They just so happen to have control over what tantamounts to a city-state. But corporations will naturally resort to draconian methods. I've heard horror stories from people outside the city about trying to use product placement. If you so much as hold a bottle the wrong way or get in the way of a logo, you'll be in for lots of trouble. And let's not start with theme parks or the like. Those are dystopias of their own. And again, most of the demonization is due to Quincy being such a clown. 
he has no power anyways. He's just the front that whatever council behind Zaibatsu Corps chose. He makes a fool of himself and the attention is taken away from whatever it is that Zaibatsu Corps is actually doing. <sighs> yeah. So, what were you saying is that, uh, what you were saying is that Glitch City is basically a huge theme park? I've called the White Knights glorified mall security in the past, so, yeah. Huh. No, seriously, and what? Ahem. Can I get a Brantini here, please? Sure, sure. Here. Thanks. So I take it you're in a good mood today? Mm, does it show? A bit. Yeah, well. I managed to nab a couple of tickets for the Kiramiki Encore concert. Nice. Oh right, as it turns out, she was just here. Again? <clears throat> Sorry. Again? Can't believe I just missed her. I was surprised too. I was more surprised she remembered my name though. And, like last time, she was quite the graceful client. Man, so those rumors about her being really nice in person were actually true. Amazing. I mean, you always want the famous people to be nice in real life. But having such backing to that claim, to hear that she's so nice to everyone. Nice to hear, you know? In fact, many think that's what made her so famous so quickly. How she's down to earth and totally accessible, making her someone everyone wants to root for? Ah, I see. Yeah, I mean, I guess you don't want to feel like you're supporting crappy people. Although, let's be honest, I've never put much thought into that one. Hell, half the time I have no idea who made what I use, or, nor do I care much. Being a nice person will take you far, though. My daddy always insists that being ruthless in the boardroom doesn't mean being an ass. And he has actually managed to get certain contracts over other more powerful people. All thanks to being a nice guy overall. Sounds like good advice. But more importantly... Daddy? Ahem. Do you really believe me saying she was just here that easily? You're not the kind to lie about stuff like that, so sure. Thanks, I guess. That said, can you go to the concert so easily? What about security and the like? My dad always has a unit keeping an eye on me from a distance, and you'd be surprised at how easily I can disguise myself with just a different hairdo and a cap. I see. I wonder if I could get in the disabled line with Say in her wounds. Although, she'll probably nag me about how she doesn't need it and we shouldn't abuse that. Eh. Hey, can you get me a classic drink? Sure. The frothy wa water the most expensive. Beer costs the same as a bleeding gin. Well, how about that? Although I guess frothy water is not much of a drink. Here. Thank you. Do you have many servants around the house, Stella? I do, but they've been with us for so long, they're pretty much family. My dad has always said that if you earn someone's trust, they'll gleefully work for you and everyone wins. We even had a young gardener that left to study engineering, and he actually came back. He still comes by every weekend to tend the plants. Man, that sounds nice. Let me know if you're ever in need of a job. I might find you something. Thanks for the offer. Wait. Hmm? I just realized something's off with the whole tech gold rush story. What would it be? Wouldn't all that tech be patented anyways? I get trying to crack it in the first place, but... That would be true if the tech was patented in the first place. It isn't? Flybatsu have been so paranoid about making the White Knights untouchable that they never patented anything. Patent would be in a database that someone could hack and retrieve in valuable info from. Not to mention, they've been using tech from other companies without any authorization. And no patent registry in their right mind would approve of that global shutdown signal. Let alone how immobilized everyone's still inside of the suits. So the ones that were upholding the law did so using suits that are, by all means, illegal. The irony runs deep, wouldn't you say? Why do it though? When you have so much money, you start thinking you can screw around with the rules. All that power makes you think you're above every law there is. 
And this city is what happens when those with money start making the rules. I'm curious though, have you ever covered up any fuck-ups by using money? I think we've all done things we're not too proud of at some point of our lives. Well, Jill, I gotta go. Always a pleasure. Please come again. Ah, Alma. No, hello? You're pretty insistent on that one, aren't you? It's basic courtesy. Something I will fight to uphold. First the greeting stop, then saying please and thanks stop, and before you know it, boom. Total anarchy. You're exaggerating. Am not. In fact, I'll go through that door again, and I expect you to properly greet me this time. Fine. Hello, Jill. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of some one gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this, and nothing more. So she quoted The Raven, which uh, is an Edgar Allan Poe poem. Love it. You overdid it. You totally overdid it. Quoth the bartender, I did not. She's so witty. She's such a nerd. It's great. So, you like poetry? I had a phase. Can I get you something? Let's start with a big cobalt velvet. Sure. One, two, four. Fuck. One, two, three, four, five, six. On the rocks and mix. Big cobalt velvet. Here you go. Thanks. Oh yeah, there's something I've been wondering about for a while. Hmm? Does the name Shadowmaster 69's Chronicles ring any bells? Wow. You went pale. No, the ring doesn't the uh, the name doesn't ring any bells. May 22nd. Today my daily card readings told me that I'd meet great change thanks to an old man. My biology teacher told me I had been picked for an inter-school contest with my latest essay. I just knew a scientific theory on the idea of auras was as revolutionary as I thought. Soon, I'll bring the world into the occult science singularity! Later entries don't seem to have gone that well, though. Mentions of being laughed at, being lectured on why the essay was wrong. Jill? I made sure to delete that blog! No evidence should be left! I can think of at least six different sources off the top of my head that have all that stuff archived. What? Why? What? Why? Sheesh. Relax, it's not that bad. What do you mean it's not that bad? Don't you realize how embarrassing it all is? You've all been young, Jill. Relax. It's not like you're still like that nowadays. That would have been embarrassing. You're not still like that. Right? Gods, no. I gave up on the whole occult stuff. It's just that remembering all that stuff is... <sighs> I don't know. I like the way you looked. All dressed in black with the rare accessory popping out, thanks to the colors. I mean, at least you had the decency to use makeup and take care of yourself. So you have a pick. Oh god. You have a fucking pick. Why do you do this to me? Why do you dig out the sins of my past? I was bored. Last Friday, I had to take my mind off the whole Diana thing, so I ran a small background check on you. Simple stuff, just checking past internet history. Activity. Please don't run background checks like that. I just used a search engine, you know? I didn't request documents or anything. What led you to the page? You do realize your main mail account everywhere is still the one you used back then, right? Like I said, relax. You were obsessed with occultism. I wanted to kiss all the boys. 
And I kind of almost accomplished that in middle school, which still sort of haunts me to till today. To today. Today. God. <sighs> Never underestimate the lengths old classmates will go to track you down. Especially if they think you're still the girl that kissed them for fun and they're lonely to boot. We all have things we're not too proud of as adults. Now I know how criminals feel when evidence is used against them. I have to ask, though, why the 69? It was supposed to be 69, not 69. Like in reference to both the lovers and the hermit, I was convinced it meant wise choices. Jill, there's nobody that would read that as 6-9. I, I was 12 at the time. Maybe turn on the fan. Please. I mean, I know the pollen's bad, but can you crack the window? Even at 12, I fucking knew what a 69 was. Just how innocent were you back then? You have no idea. Well, let's sweeten things up a bit. I'll have a sugar rush. Sure. One, two, one. And you deserve all this alcohol for being a, a snitch. Here. This is the thing. Say, Alma, speaking of the past, what was your last long-term relationship like? That's sudden. You dug through my past, I've earned the right to dig through yours. Fine, fine. Long-lasting relationships. Huh. Romantic ones, I'm guessing? Yup. Hmm. Well, I've had about four boyfriends who I'd describe as such, that I've introduced to my family and all. The first one was in high school. I broke up with him because he cheated on me. I remember the other girl trying to pick a fight and me just saying, keep the fucker. The second one was during my freshman year. I broke up with him after he thought it'd be funny to punch me in the arm. He starts with a friendly hit and before you know it. Anyways, the other guy I met shortly after I dropped out. He was interested in marriage, but he wanted to get married after only half a year or so of knowing him. And then there's Richard. Who? I spent almost four years with him. We got along pretty well. We had awesome chemistry. I truly loved him. But as time went by, there was a rift that started separating us. He just didn't like my family. He didn't. Moreover, he wasn't a family person. He distanced himself from his own and voiced that he didn't want kids. There was a part of me that wanted to believe, even if just for a little bit, that maybe he'd change his mind. But as much as I loved him, that one detail brought a growing gap between us. And at one point I just had to break up with him. But I'm not here to depress you. Bring me a beer, will ya? Sure. Thanks for telling me that, by the way. Don't mention it. Okay, one more question and we're even. Wow, you really are impressed with that blog, huh? Sure, ask away. At what age did you get those implants in your boot? Jill, I love you and I know you're saying that in jest, but I've lived through so many rumors about me getting plastic surgery that I can't and won't take it as a joke. As such, in honoring our friendship, I'll just say this. They're real and they're spectacular. Now ask the real question before I slap you. I'll grant you one and only one chance to call me by my full name as a compensation then. I'd gladly take your offer. It's funny that you mentioned slapping, because my real question was, why did you get your hands chopped? <laughs> chopped. Well, there's a couple of reasons. The first is that I spend lots of time typing, and these replacements help me avoid carpal tunnel syndrome. Real problems. Oh. And there's other utilities, like how I can interfere with my many devices, interface with many devices. For example, there's a tiny computer embedded in my glasses. If I move my index finger, it acts like the computer's cursor. There's lots more, but there's small things that don't sound that impressive when I say it out loud. How did your family take the operation? They took it well enough, except for my mom. She freaked out for months. 
She even went to the hospital to ask for my hands. Don't you miss them? Sometimes, but just during emotional moments. Moments. But as luck would have it, someone else has them. Shortly before my operation, there was an accident on the highway. One of the victims was this young lady whose right hand got completely crushed. I told them to check if we were compatible and all that. I mean, implants are not everyone's first choice. If they can get a natural replacement. A bit of cosmetic treatment, and it could pass off as her original hand with no problem. Last I heard, we were compatible and the family agrees to the donation. I don't know what became of her, but I hope she's fine. And you didn't tell your mom about that? I didn't want her pestering the poor girl. So, are we cool now? Are we even now? Are we? You were pretty pissed about my comment regarding your boobs. Again, I'm sorry, it sounded a lot less rude in my head. Yeah, don't worry about that. Besides, I get to call you Julianne once. Now you don't. Eh? Why? You just called me by my full name. Are you serious? One chance and only one chance, and you just used it up. Damn it! Surprise! Hey Alma, this might be a weird tangent, but do you believe in ghosts? Hey! Not particularly, no. Although there was this paper I read once that was quite interesting. Hmm? It proposed a scenario where nanomachine clusters would leave the body after death, and then act as a collective hive mind through residual brainwaves. The result would basically be an image not unlike a hologram. Of course, the hypothesis fell through because such nanomachine density is impossible in a body. Even 5% of the amount needed is enough to make the blood too dense for the heart. And it's not like brainwaves are potent enough to create those reactions. Still, an interesting read though. I see. Hmm. Don't give me that look, it's not my fault that you convince yourself that you're crazy. Well, I'll leave then. See you tomorrow. See ya. All done? I am. What about you, Jill? For some reason, the auto girl left him like that, it seems. You think? It might have been while he was out. True. Hey, boss, you're a fan of wrestling, aren't you? I mean, you were a wrestler, so... That I am? Yeah. Why? I was wondering, isn't wrestling fake? Aren't twin tails for little girls and teens with 8th grade syndrome? 8th grade what? When you get down to it, wrestling is as real as a soap opera. I mean, you don't really expect a legal lawsuit to be fixed in a ring, right? Sure, in my ideal world, you would solve legal problems through good old wrestling, but... Ahem. No, seriously, 8th grade what? But you don't go around calling soap operas fake. I think 8th grade syndrome is more like the middle school syndrome, like it's Chunibyo. You know what I mean? It's a show. It just so happens to use fights as an expression. You might as well see it as in a unique form of theater. Besides, considering the injuries many wrestlers suffer, it's not all fake. Huh, didn't think about it that way. Sadly, I won't stand for anyone bad-mouthing wrestling. So now I have to go and break Jill's back to make you humble. Oh well. Wait, what? Come here, fuckboy! Fuckboy! Did she really do it? Eighth grade what? <laughs> yeah, I know, I I took a hit. No, I'm broke, so is the game over? Oh fuck. Your event contract is now invalid. Please vacate the place by February or discuss a renewal with your landlord. Jill couldn't pay her rent. This will distract her at work. Ah, <sighs> shit. The alley where you found me is pretty comfortable. Quiet, you. That's not good. Damn it, I didn't want. To make Jill homeless, but honestly, if it weren't for my folks, I also would have some trouble paying rent. Valhalla. The name sounds silly and a bit hard to pronounce. Good thing it's actually called Valhalla. Oh, VA 11 Hall A. 
The numbers, the funny numbers and letters are just a code. Anyway, I visited this cute and small bar downtown twice after getting lost for a bit. I think the area was called Neon District. At first it was a bit scary because I forgot my way back, but once I got in there, I felt really safe and at home. The bartenders are a bunch of sweethearts and the boss was such a class act. I even took a photo with her and sent a video to her little sister. I look forward to visiting again. The drinks were very tasty, even though they weren't made of real alcohol. I didn't know. I don't know if I want the bar to suddenly become a fan tourism hotspot. Real. Anyway. New Lilum regulations. The current regulations preventing Lilum from looking too human have been working well so far, but Glitch City's government is planning to create even more more new laws so as to enforce robot-like features among the Lilum in a bid to reduce identity theft. Glitch City, the first nation to adopt the current standard in artificial intelligence and robotics, was the first to allow robots into normal society, quickly giving them necessary rights so as to sustain a long-term experiment about their role in human evolution. Unfortunately, the, the first year saw numerous reports of identity theft resulting in the need for more stringent measures. It is unknown what kind of laws we'll have in the future regarding their existence. After great earthquakes, salvage agents are the new rage. The great earthquake that sank large portions of the world five years ago also created an unexpected new profession, salvage agents. Summer Aki is one of these salvagers and she shares her experience with the augmented eye. Seeing big cities like Tokyo and places like Karaka several kilometers below the ocean surface that's something that gets to you, you know? Millions lived there before the Great Earthquake, and it's on me to retrieve their memories, their lives. Aki is now working to retrieve items from a research facility in the Tanagashima Island in Japan. Grand Slam Fighters crowns a new heavyweight champion. Glitch City's most popular pro wrestling promotion crowned a new heavyweight champion yesterday, with Giant Yusuke taking the gold from fellow Japanese wrestler Justin Liger. After previous champion 66 American Kid was forced to relinquish the title due to a head injury, GSF decided to hold a tournament to find a new title award holder. The match ended after an epic, after an epic 30 minute bout with Giant Yusuke applying a massive German suplex for the three count. During an interview with AE, Giant Yusuke told us through a translator that he's waiting for 66 American to recover. I won't rest until I beat him clean. So exciting, if only I knew what was being, what was going on. Australia. Australia has had more but people look more robot robot like by the way. Okay. So anyway, um wait, say? Um can she go to work? What's gonna happen now that she's technically homeless? Friday, December 30th. Good evening. Mmm. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. Jill, are you humming Shine Spark? Ah, uh, hey Jill. Are you okay? Are you in love, maybe? Hmm, nothing of the sort. I'm fine. Right. No, seriously, did you fuck? Men only get so happy after they fucked. That's not... Oh my god, you totally fucked. Was it Alma? Did you have seven minutes in heaven with her? No, I didn't. In any case, congratulations. I haven't seen you this happy since. Well, never. Hello, Jill. This is for you, Jill. And this is... A copy of Sunshine Stone. You've been humming that shit non non-stop, so here you go. Um, thanks, I guess. It's also a congratulatory gift. For what? Don't play dumb, you totally just got some. It was Titty Hacker, right? You always had your eyes on her. I sent her a message. She'll confirm if she did the dirty with him or not. Let me know. Right. <sighs> I'll be back in my office then. Anyway. It's true. Guys are always happier right after having sex. Can confirm. As somebody who has, I'm going to say, had the sex. Believe me, right?
Found mixed drinks and changed lives. Ah, oh, it's her. And him. Um... You are too happy and you are too mopey. What happened? I was right. Eh? That Laura girl was head over heels for him. I was right on the money! Betty was right, and that deserves a beer! And you? I'm fine. Evicted. Holy shit, that's a new low for me. Here. Woo! So the girl was actually infatuated with him? You should have seen her screaming from the top of her lungs that she liked him. And him just standing there, thinking. Just like that! In retrospect, it was a tad too cliched for my taste. Brrr. Still. I knew she liked him. I was right! I was right! He doesn't seem particularly happy. He never is. Unlike your coworker, holy shit, did he fuck? You're making it too obvious, Jill. Pow! <laughs> that beaming face is unmistakable. The face of a guy that got some and enjoyed every moment. Back to deal, though. Like I said, he seems lost in thought. Victories like these are few and far between. Let me enjoy myself. <sighs> Can I get something non-alcoholic here? That's not how you drown your sorrows, piece of scrap. I'll have a bloom light. Okay. Something non alcoholic. Seventy. Get the most expensive. Seventy. Eighty. One fifty. One fifty. Fifty. And Which one was it? Here. Thanks. Same. Celebrate all you want, but I'm freaking out here. I know nothing about relationships. I have no idea what to do. Well, for starters, what do you think, Jill? Me? Her? Betty, I've seen a few of your relationships, remember? Aside from Veronica, there's Angela, Pamela, Sandra, Rita, Monica, Erica, Tina, Mary, and Jessica. Or should I say... Student share the bedsheet, snores like a pig, cold feet, shampoo waster, chocolate addict, too religious, fan of the wrong rugby team, teetoler. Sorry, teetoler? that teetler like and choose with mouth open what do you think Jill <laughs> that you must be quite the heartbreaker to have so many relationships in a short period of time I mean about piece of scraps situation and thank you I'm not the right person for this um Jill <laughs> He's still on fucking cloud nine. Or is it fucking in cloud nine? <sighs> Sarders, how do you feel about her? I don't know. I don't know her that well. You could start there. Ask her out sometime. Get to know her. Maybe you'll she'll change your mind and maybe you'll change yours and in the end you lose nothing by What? I'm just realizing I'm giving love advice to a Lilum. I don't know how well it applies to you. <laughs> These things are humans in all but organs and nowadays anyway. Even if that's the case, it's interesting that she felt that way towards him. 
Why wouldn't she? This fell is a good catch if I do say so myself. And, like I said, humans and all but organs. You've surely encountered Lilum that you sometimes forgot are not humans. Forget are not humans. Well, we live in weird times, but hey, that only makes things makes them more interesting. It's odd going to other cities and not seeing the same integration of Lilum though. Well, Glitch City is pretty much the cradle of social experiments involving Lilum integration, so... Ahem. <clears throat> anyway... Just try to get to know her. You'll find out how you feel afterwards. Yeah, yeah I think I'll try that. Quite the uninspired device, if you ask me. Anything else? Let's commemorate the occasion with a piano man and a piano woman. Shouldn't have skipped October's rent to bio. That Wi-Fi router dildo. You know, I still feel awful about it, but she's got uh, great words right here. Um, uh, what was it? Piano Man. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, five, one, two, three, four, 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 five,
aged mix. Here. Oh my god. This is not what I wanted. Are you even trying, bartender? Sip or talk, not both. Oh, I had a chance to sip just now. And now, it's time for me to be a nice person and give you something nice. Eh? It's the second time I'm here, so it's only natural you get your own copy of my theme song. No, thank you. Don't be shy, let me give you one. I mean it. Oh, no, thank you. Well, too late. It's already in your player. That can't... How in the ever-living fuck did you do it? Magic! That's bullshit. Video editing magic! Did you just hack into the music player? Let's move on, shall we? <sighs> yeah, whatever. Hey, weren't there dogs? Last time you, w you talked about this place like it was this... Zany haven of sorts, but I see the same shit. Seriously. No decorations or anything of the like? Good question. Where are the dogs? I either haven't paid enough attention to their arrival, or they haven't come. Idols, newspaper managers, talking dogs, and yet this is the same old bar like last time. I might sue you for fake advertising, you know? Now that I think about it, maybe boss just donated money to this Sierra thing and then trick the dog into coming here as a part-timer for kicks. Oh, well, anything interesting lately? I mean, it's not like I miss them, but they should at least show their faces. Hello? Sorry, what'd you say? I was asking if there were any new stories. This is not a newspaper, you know. Nor is it a crazy stories on demand streaming service. That's a big fat lie and you know it. Shut up. But I said nothing. <laughs> er, I meant... So shut that idea up. Yeah, that. I won't. Last time I came here, the viewership peaked for some reason. And I want to find out why. Maybe Pretty Boy over there can tell us the story of who he fucked. Hmm. <laughs> He's so distracted, he won't even make a retort. Amazing. I guess there's something worth saying, but... Then I want to hear it! Well, Kuramiki came yesterday again. You're shitting me. You expect me to believe she came all the way here again? Do you even have proof like the glass from last time? Well, if I may interject. You been listening, boss? The walls are pretty thin. Oh. Anyway, she did. I even took a pic with her. She did what? Let's see. Why? 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 I try to make an appointment with her and she's always busy. But you sit there and she just comes waltzing over? It's not fair. Hey, if I knew how the hell stuff like that happened, I'd share my secrets. I was just as baffled as you are right now. Yeah, but I bet you're not even that much of a fan anyway, are you? You're not wrong. Can you at least tell me how nice she was as a client? Very graceful client, much like the last time. Really nice girl. I'm gonna give you my number. If she ever comes back, you let me know, you hear? Not gonna let you keep her to yourself. I really doubt she'll come back again, though. She already came twice, and I'm not taking any chances. Ah, I need something to drown this anger with. Give me something girly, will you? Okay. Yeah, I'm just like, if I knew in advance that I could just serve people the most expensive thing that fit their descriptions, then I would have done that. Now Jill's homeless, and I'm sad. So sad. Here. Phew! 
Let's just chill a bit. It's still not fair. You know, you're boring today. You're not chatting that much, nor are you doing anything funny. Maybe the whole peak viewership thing is just you? Eh? Maybe this bar and me both had nothing to do with the spike. Maybe you were just that good. Are you hitting on me? I am not. In fact, I'm kind of trying to get you to leave. Pronto. Don't be so hard on the girl. She's fun. Another nuisance shows up. What? Joe hates me. <laughs> not hate, it's just... Wait, I'm not having this conversation yet. Boring. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, you're curious, right? About Fuckboy's partner? Want to know who it was? You know? Maybe, maybe not. That maybe not settles it then. Not taking any chances. Oh, come on! Um, bartender, you're making lots of faces there. It's nothing, really. Did the two bartenders break or something? Should I call the manager? Tech support! Hey, Joe. Inner and outer voice, remember? Fuck. What? Who fucked? Aside from that guy, I mean. Um, uh... Say, you're oddly calm today. Well, I've been getting more sleep lately. That way I don't feel like if I stop speaking, I'll die. Crash is one hell of a drug. And wouldn't you know, I can actually make it premium time if I go commando. Huh. But come on, I'm getting bored out of my ass here. Do something. I'm not a dog, you can't just ask me to roll over, you know. Mind if I entertain you a bit then? Boss? You and Jill take a break. I'll entertain the missy here. All right. Ah, chill. By that I meant, take Jill with you. I don't want him humming to the middle of the road and right into a... to a truck's grill. Heh, <laughs> grilled Jill. Right. All right, Jill, come with me. Eh? Oh my god, we're not done yet! I thought we would be done today! Ah. If you're interpreting this as game hate, you're wrong. I'm just like, I didn't realize I would be streaming this specific game for so long. And you're like, well maybe you should just stop and play something else and finish the game on your own time because streams and your own personal gaming are different. But what about all the time I spent invested in it already? That's, that's doggy do. <laughs> Come on. It's not my fault nobody wants to watch the game live. There are probably some Let's Plays on YouTube of this game with comparable, if not better, voice acting. I just haven't seen it yet on any of the channels that I generally frequent. So, you know, I'm making the content that I would enjoy myself. That's what they say to do. But, but, I did say I would definitely end the stream, like, a little early today. And honestly, it's not even that much earlier than regular time. Because, term paper, yeah, still gotta graduate, sorry. After I graduate, though, maybe I could dedicate more time to streaming if I have a job. You know. Maybe. We'll find out. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. Doo -doo -doo. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. You know I love your faces. Sorry, that's Philly D's thing. I'm not going to steal it. Anyway, whoever tuned in, you, you're the real one. Uh, stay pretty, y'all. Bye.